Good morning, everyone. Michelle Arnott here at Diamond Rock Glass Studio. Thank you so much for joining me today. With Valentine's Day coming up, I thought this would be a good time to introduce a sweetheart kit. Um, and in this kit, I am going to include enough patterns and glass to make eight different hearts. The first heart is this one here. Um, it's got five pieces. It's pretty simple and elegant, but I will be introducing an inside cut right here. Um, the inside cuts are the most difficult cuts that you will do with stained glass. Um, this one's kind of slight, but I think this is a good pattern to show you how to achieve a good inside cut. Um, and with each video that I do, I am going to try to introduce something new in each video and get a little more advanced as I go on. So enough glass and the pattern to make two of these hearts. And then this is the second heart. I will include the glass and pattern and two of these diamond shaped bubbles enough to make two of these hearts and I know you can't tell right now um, but this glass is a really beautiful dark blue purple color that you can't see unless you're looking um, at the light through it so enough glass bubbles and pattern to make two of these hearts and then enough glass in the pattern to make these two red hearts and I will also introduce um, the two inch square bubbles. One of them is clear and one of them has a glue chip pattern on it, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And then the bevels and glass to make these two pink hearts. So we're gonna start with this white heart first. So I'm gonna introduce the inside cut. This has five pieces. Here's the pattern here and here's the three different types of glass that I'll be using. Um, you can see that number five and three are going to be cut out of this white glass. This white glass does have a front and a back, so I'm going to turn it over so the smooth glossy side, which is the back, is facing up. So I'm going to grab my number five and my number three, and since my glass is upside down, now my pattern pieces are going to be upside down. And remember I told you about pattern with the glass. Sometimes it's the color, sometimes it's the pattern. Um, you can see with uh, this white glass, it has a pattern of color going like this. So if I want the pattern of the color to be going up and down, I kind of want to see how that fits on the glass. So this heart is right side up. Let's put the glass right side up. So the pattern piece is actually going to go something like this on the glass. So I can go like this. It's going to go um, in this direction, but remember I have to have the glass and the pattern piece upside down. So if you go like that and then flip it over, now you have your pattern piece the way you want it situated on the glass. And then this number three um, is kind of pretty much just up and down. So we can just flip that over and place that here. And remember, we want to keep enough room in between each piece to be able to separate with straight lines. So let's go ahead and arrange all of our pieces on the glass that we're going to be cutting it from. Number one and four is going to come from this glass. It's a really pretty, it's called Flower Six, I think. Um, it looks like lace. It's really pretty. Um, it does have a texture, so we're going to turn it upside down and place the number one and four upside down also. And this pattern is pretty random, so we don't have to worry about the way the texture is going and it's all clear, so there's no color pattern. And the last piece, um, number two, I chose a ripple iridescent glass. So it has a ripple texture and an iridescent quality. It's really pretty in the middle of the heart. It'll really, um, depending on how the light's hitting it, um, it kind of changes colors. So we're gonna put this piece of glass upside down and then our pattern piece upside down. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace all of these. This is the part I'm going to show you how to do, how to achieve a good inside cut. And on this particular piece, you've got an inside curve both here and here. So when we're cutting any inside curve, I hope you can see this okay, um, you want to first cut straight from tip to tip. 
So you are not going to go inside that curve at all. You're going to go straight. Um, and the same with this inside curve. You're going to go straight from this tip to that tip. I know my lines aren't that straight, but you get the idea. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get all my outside curves and not do any inside curves first. I did want to mention too, um, these have um, plastic feet on them. When you purchase them brand new, they have these plastic feet. Something that I noticed very recently is one of my students said they got these home and they took the plastic feet off, seeing that um, the ones that I use at the studio don't have the plastic feet on them. Um, at one point, these all had plastic feet on them, and I'm not sure if they're called plastic feet, but that's what I'm calling them. Um, that wears out after time, and there are replacement plastic that you can put over the ends of these, which I did, and those were out also um, from so many classes and so much use of these running pliers. So I, I picked up a, some advice, which is a can of what's called Plasti-Dip, where you actually dip the, the ends of the running pliers into Plasti-Dip. It's like a liquid, and then um, you take it out and it dries, and you can kind of see that these need to be dipped again. But until, when you get these brand new and you have the plastic feet on them, keep them on until they wear out and either get new plastic feet or dip them in plastic dip or something. You never want metal on glass. So um, let's continue with cutting the shape out. Okay, so now I have all except for this inside cut and this inside cut. Um, so what we're gonna do to get these inside cuts out is we're going to work on them one cut at a time uh, with shallow cuts. So the first cut might look something like this. The second cut might be something like this. Um, the third cut might be like that. So it might take three cuts to get that out. And every time I make an inside score, I'm going to grab it with a pair of running pliers. Um, like this with the flat side up and grab it and snap it out or pull it out. So let's see how this works. And again, I should be sweeping my board. So let me do that. We never want glass shards underneath where we're cutting. You could break your glass or you could cut yourself. Okay, so let's get this first shallow cut. And then I'm gonna grab my uh, grossing pliers right in the middle and try to snap that out. And then I'm gonna go from the other direction and try to work at it from this side and get another shallow area out. So we'll snap that part out. And then we have <clears throat> a little bit left. You, of course, need to press hard enough, but you don't wanna press too hard because you don't wanna snap the glass. So, that's just kind of a learning curve you'll learn as you cut more glass. So now that looks pretty good, this inside curve. So the more we cut off of this, also um, the more delicate this piece is gonna get. So you can notice that there's a pretty delicate thin end here. So this, this side is gonna be even more delicate than this side is. So Again, we wanna be careful, but we're gonna do the same thing that we did before, which is start shallow. Actually, um, you're always gonna cut shallow curves. And so that might be a good first one, and then like that, and then like that, and maybe four to get that out, because this one is a little bit deeper. And um, I always do my best to make sure I have a successful inside cut um, but like I said, these are tricky, so it's possible that, you know, I'll snap it. Um, one of the reasons I'm giving you enough glass for two of these is just in case that happens. I want to give you two chances to make sure you um, can achieve this inside cut. So let's start with the flat side up, grab it in the center and pull that out. Then I'm going to go at it from the other end and pull that piece out. So I'm going back and forth and really making sure there's no 
glass shards under the glass. Try to get another shallow piece out. And then I'm gonna try one more. Now, the more you do, the more delicate it becomes. So you really wanna be careful. So sometimes I leave a little bit more and let the grinder take care of it. Okay, so I think we're looking pretty good with this piece. Um, what's left to get off, we can um, have the grinder do the work. So um, this is looking pretty good. So let's move on to this. Well, actually we need this piece here. So let's do this piece and then we'll do these other three pieces. So now we're gonna be making this heart. This is a really pretty blue, purple, even some pink in this. Um, and I know you can't see it because you can't see the light shining through it. So I'm actually gonna pause the video and show you what a picture of a large sheet of this looks like through the sunlight. So as you can see, it's a very, colorful, very beautiful piece of glass. Um, the bevel in the center um, measures one and a half inches on this angle and then three inches up and down. Um, and a bevel, I'm sure you know what a bevel is, but in case you don't, it's made usually um, by taking thick glass and creating an angled surface around the entire periphery. And it acts as a prism in sunlight creating a really interesting color diffraction um, and it can really highlight your glasswork. So I love using bevels, um, they're just really beautiful. So um, here's the pattern that we're using today and here's the piece of the glass that we're gonna be using. And remember when I talked about using silver or gold on black glass or a dark colored glass, um, this is a time you'll want a silver or gold Sharpie um, or marker. And again, uh, this is the front of the glass, the textured side. So we're gonna um, place our pattern pieces upside down and I'm gonna fast forward through this. So now we're down to our last four hearts. We're gonna make two small pink hearts and two small red hearts. Um, there's gonna be two of each smooth two inch square bubbles and two two inch square glue chip uh, textured bubbles. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Um, glue chip is a really common texture. It's been around for a long, long time. You used to see it in a, a lot of different colors. Now I only see it in clear. In fact, I can only get it in clear from my wholesaler. Um, so how this is made, they start with clear glass, um, they sandblast it, and then they cover it with uh, warm uh, hide glue. And then as that glue cools, it adheres to the roughed up glass. And then as it dries, um, it shrinks and rips into thin shards off of the surface and it creates this fern-like random pattern. It's really pretty. It's often used um, like in snowy uh, snowflakes. Um, it looks like frost on a window. So um, I think it's really pretty. So you're gonna get two uh, glue chip bubbles and two smooth bubbles. So here's the glass that we're using. Um, the front side is up. So I'm gonna turn them each over like this. In this kit, you're gonna get a Pa uh, paper like this with four hearts drawn on it and you actually only need one pattern piece because of course the bevels are already um, cut so we're going to trace this um, eight times so four times on the red and four times on the pink and then we'll cut those out OK, 
Okay, so here are our four hearts, our four small hearts, two red ones, two pink ones. What I'm gonna do now is stop the recording and I'm going to grind and foil. And then when I come back, I'll be ready for the soldering. I'm gonna try to keep all my videos under 20 minutes. If you want any direction on how to grind or how to foil, please refer. The first video really details every um, step of it. Um, so I'm gonna shut this off for now and I will see you when I'm ready for soldering. Next, what I'm gonna do first is the tacking of each piece. So wherever I have two or more pieces that meet, I'm gonna put some flux. So on this white heart, I've only got one, two, three spots. And then on my little hearts, I've got two spots. Just so each piece will act as one piece, I'll connect all the pieces. Um, and then on my blue purple heart, I've actually got one, two, three, four spots. I have been asked to slow down during the soldering. This video is not going to be the video where I'm going to really detail on the soldering, <clears throat> but I thought I would get a little bit closer and show you what I'm doing, at least with the white heart. Um, and then I'll probably fast forward through the other five hearts here. So <clears throat> like I said, first I'm just tacking. So in all the spots that I put flux, I'm just going to drop some solder. I'll walk you through um, the white heart here. So I'm gonna flex the entire front. <clears throat> You'll see I have a little bit of a gap <clears throat> right here. Um, I'll easily be able to fill that in. It's not perfect, but in stained glass, nothing is ever perfect. Um, and in the end, it's gonna look beautiful. So let's go ahead and start with the white heart and I'm just running this along um, my the tip of my iron is not um, flat like this it's sideways or at least somewhat sideways that helps to achieve uh, more of a bead um, you can see like right here um, my iron is flat and the solder in there is indented a little bit I want to build that up a little bit, so I'm going to melt more solder in it, and I'm going to angle my iron a little bit um, to achieve the ideal solder line, which is slightly beaded. So, and you can keep going over one spot until you're happy with how the solder line looks. Thank you again so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the Sweetheart Kit. I just want to recap again what's included in this kit. You're going to get um, the pattern, enough glass to make two of these white hearts, and the hooks. You're going to get the glass, the pattern, the two diamond-shaped bevels to make these two hearts. Um, notice this one I finished with a black patina. This one I left the solder line silver. It's up to you how you want to finish your piece. I will include these two glue chip bevels, the glass, the pattern, and the hooks to make these two hearts. And the two clear bevels, the glass, and the hooks to make these two hearts. So eight hearts in total. I know Valentine's Day is just a couple days away, but lucky for us, hearts are in season 365 days a year, right? Um, I do have a website that's coming out very soon. It should be live any day. It's www.diamondrockglassstudio.com. On that website, you will be able to view all my videos. You will be able to um, click on the page where all the kits are. You can view pictures of the kits, what's in the kits, 
and click and purchase right from the website. My first video, the sun catcher video, which is 55 minutes long, if there's any part of the stained glass process that you need a refresher on or that I sped through that you wanted maybe some little more direction on, go back to that first video, get to the part that you need a refresher. And um, in that first video, I really detail everything. So I'm excited for my next video, uh, my next few videos. I have some really great ideas. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day.